And Did you communicate with the five scientists who wrote the opinion piece in Nature where they were describing, oh, this, there's no way this could have come from, was from the lab? That was not me. There's new evidence that Anthony Fauci not only initiated efforts to cover up evidence pointing to a lab origin of COVID-19, but actively shaped a highly influential academic paper which excluded the possibility of a lab leak. Fauci's involvement with the paper was not acknowledged by the authors, nor by Fauci himself. The paper, Proximal Origin, argues aggressively for natural origin. While it was known that the authors privately thought the virus came out of the Wuhan lab, it had been unclear if the authors had reshaped their views to please Fauci, or if Fauci had had an active role in shaping the article himself. Fauci controls a huge portion of the world's research funds for virologists, and at least three virologists involved in drafting Proximal Origin have seen substantial increases in their funding since the paper was first published. Hi everyone, and welcome to Truth Over News with Jeff Carlson and Hans Manke. The Proximal Origin article was co-authored by five virologists four of whom participated in Fauci's February 1st secret teleconference, which was hastily convened by Fauci and Welcome Trust head Jeremy Farrar after public reporting of a potential funding link between the Wuhan Institute of Virology and Fauci's NIAID. The initial draft of Proximal Origin was completed on the very same day the teleconference took place. Meanwhile, at least three of its authors were privately telling Fauci's teleconference group that they were 60 to 80% sure that COVID-19 had come out of a lab. Newly released notes taken by House Republican staff from emails that still remain largely redacted clearly point to Fauci actively shaping proximal origin toward a natural origin conclusion. House Republicans gained limited access to the emails after a months-long battle with Fauci's parent body, the Department of Health and Human Services. The new emails reveal that on February 4, 2020, one of the article's co-authors, virologist Edward Holmes, shared a draft of proximal origin with Farrar. Like Fauci, Farrar controls the disbursement of vast amounts of funding for virology research. Holmes prefaced his email to Farrar with the statement that the authors did not mention other anomalies as this will make us look like loons. It's not yet known exactly what other anomalies Holmes was referring to, but during Fauci's teleconference, which included Holmes, participants discussed at least two anomalies specific to the virus. The virus's fear and cleavage site, which has never been observed in naturally occurring SARS coronaviruses, and the virus's unusual backbone, which fails to match any known virus backbone. Farrar immediately shared Holmes's draft with Fauci and Collins via email, but he excluded other members of the teleconference. The ensuing discussion between the three men suggests the reason for their secretiveness was that they were shaping the content of the paper itself, something that has never been publicly acknowledged. It's notable that the discussion only included the three senior members of the teleconference. And using Farah as a sort of conduit to communicate with the authors may have been used by Fauci and Collins to add a layer of deniability. During same-day exchanges, Collins pointed out that the Proximal Origin paper argued against an engineered virus, but that serial passage was still an option. Fauci appeared to share Collins' concern, noting in a one-line response, serial passage in ACE2 transgenic mice with two question marks. Serial passage is a process whereby a virus is manipulated in a lab by repeatedly passing it through human-like tissue, such as genetically modified mice that mimic human lung tissue. This is notable because during the February 1st teleconference, at least three of Proximal Origin's authors advised Collins and Fauci that the virus may have been manipulated in a lab through serial passage or through genetic insertion of certain features. The day after Fauci and Collins shared their comments, Farrar emailed Fauci and Collins stating that the team will update the draft today and I will forward immediately. They will add further comments on the glycans. 
The reference to glycans is notable, as they are carbohydrate-based polymers produced by humans and could not have been generated in serial passage. The push by Fauci, Collins, and Farah to have the paper's authors expand on the issue of glycans confirms that they were exerting direct influence on the content of proximal origin. A study later found that proximal origin's claims regarding glycans were not valid. We currently don't have further information on these conversations, perhaps because Farrar himself had suggested that scientific discussions should be taken offline. But 11 days later, on February 16, 2020, Proximal Origin was published online. The paper argued aggressively for a natural origin. An immediate observation from an examination of this version of Proximal Origin is that glycans, the term that Farrar, Fauci, and Collins wanted to emphasize, is cited 12 times. The February 16th version also omits any mention of the ACE2 transgenic mice that Fauci had initially flagged in his February 4th email to Collins and Farrar. Although this version of Proximal Origin acknowledges that a furin cleavage site could have been generated through serial passage using animals with ACE2 receptors, the cited animal in the February 16th version was ferrets, not transgenic mice. The author's decision to use ferrets stands out not only because the term transgenic mice was almost certainly used in the February 4th version, but also because it was known at the time that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was conducting serial passage experiments on coronaviruses using ACE2 transgenic mice. Even more conspicuously, even the reference to ferrets was removed entirely in later versions. In its place, a passage was added that stated that serial passage experiments with ACE2 transgenic mice had not previously been described in academic literature, despite the fact that the Wuhan Institute's work with ACE2 transgenic mice had been extensively described in academic papers. Following the online publication of Proximal Origin on February 16, 2020, the article was published in the science journal Nature on March 17, 2020. In addition to the changes surrounding the transgenic mice, a number of other notable edits were made to strengthen the natural origin narrative. Perhaps the most important edit is the addition of we do not believe that any type of laboratory-based scenario is plausible. This is the most frequently cited quote from Proximal Origin, but nowhere in the February 16th version does this language appear. Another prominent edit was the change of a sentence that had said that genomic evidence does not support the idea that SARS-CoV-2 is a laboratory construct. Two, the evidence shows that SARS-CoV-2 is not a purposefully manipulated virus. Similar changes in language are evident in various parts of the March 17th version. While the February 16th version merely downplayed the possibility of the virus having been engineered in a lab, by the time the article appeared in Nature, the word engineered had been expunged from the article altogether. The email exchange between Farah, Collins, and Fauci presents clear evidence that the three men took an active role in shaping the narrative of proximal origin. And a comparison of the February 16th and March 17th version demonstrates that the changes fail to reflect any fundamental change in scientific analysis. Instead, the authors employed linguistic changes and wholesale deletions designed to reinforce the natural origin narrative. Science journals require that contributions to scientific papers need to be acknowledged. And the newly revealed emails appear to confirm that Fauci, Farah, and Collins met the criteria for acknowledgement, but their names have never appeared on any published version of Proximal Origin, indicating that the three men did not want their involvement in the paper's creation to be known.